invited. Uh, two rumors I've always heard that I, I wanted to confirm. I, one was that uh, when Lee Harvey Oswald ran into that movie theater, that Frank Sinatra owned that movie theater. Do you know anything about that? No. Okay. What about no, the? And I haven't heard that rumor. Okay. What, was Sinatra at the White House the day the Kennedy got killed? Hmm. No, not that I know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've just things I've heard. Um, now, what no, about? But, okay. Oh, I was going to say, but it, um, I'm sure you know that he was having an affair with uh, one of the Kennedy sisters. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. When she was married to Peter Lawford, he was having an affair with her. And uh, he was heard on wiretaps. Uh, he didn't think much of her. And as far as physical attraction, you know, and uh, he started having an affair with her when obviously when Peter Lawford was out. And he said uh, to a couple people that the reason he was doing it because he wanted to get close to Jack Kennedy and Robert Kennedy. And once that happened, he was going to cut her off. So there's a lot of interesting things like that uh, regarding the Kennedy family and him kind of a well, not a conventional working relationship yeah. it was a relationship now, now what about after the assassination did he ever discuss it or talk about it what he knew or anything regarding JFK assassination yeah yeah um, well he was from what we've learned that he was upset by it and uh he, through time uh, over the years, uh, what he told a number of people that uh, he really thought it was probably the CIA, the government killed him, hmm. but he never discounted what uh, RFK did when he's attorney general. He started going after the mob when the mob really put his brother in office, and they thought they had a deal with the dad that they'd help him and everything would be cool. And uh, so he wasn't quite sure uh, exactly what his belief was, but <clears throat> who knows what he heard through the time, yeah. who told him what. But uh, he thought that, well, maybe, you know, they they stuck it to the mob. Uh, the mob thought they had a deal that, you know, uh, the Kennedys would lay off, the AG would lay off them. Instead, he went after them. And they thought they were double-crossed. And uh, so there are a lot of people that were upset. But he said, you know, I, I just don't know if they would do that. But he wasn't quite sure. But as, you know, as time goes by, there's a lot of reports regarding Oswald's connection, some connection with the mob, and that, but especially Jack Ruby's yeah. mob case. And then I've got documents uh, that from the CIA that Oswald was an operator an operator for the CIA. So, you know, when you start seeing that, you say, wait a minute, he was working for the CIA as a clandestine agent, especially when he was in Russia. He said he defected to Russia. But I've got documents that were reporting in that he was the source for information to the CIA from the radio plant that he was working in. So you, you look at that and you say, well, you know, <laughs> CIA knocked off a lot of people at yeah. the time. And uh, they were certainly involved in assassinations of other foreign leaders, so why wouldn't they, if they thought they could get away with it for whatever reason, why wouldn't they do it to a president? You just, you just don't know. What about, like, the rest of the Rat Pack and, and their organized crime connections? Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> they, the main one, Dean Martin, uh, yeah. was definitely had some very, very close connections. So did Sammy Davis. Uh, but theirs was more out of fear than anything else. They respected the guys because they feared them. And uh, that was their Joey Bishop, man, you know, not, not really. He was kind of hanging around. Peter Lawford was kind of tossed into it because of his association and being part of the Rat Pack then before, you know, Sinatra had nothing to do with him any longer so there was always some of that but it was mainly sammy um you know not so much joey and not so much lawford but it was him and dean martin that were the primary guys that knew a lot of the mob guys had dinner with the mob guys throughout their lives so um 
their association was certainly there. You know, it's funny. Dean Martin's uh, uncle was Abe Vigoda, who was in The Godfather. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like one of those little known. Uh, little yeah, right. Character actor, real character guy. Yeah, I think we got uh, Barney Miller. You know. Um, now you were telling me before too. There was something about Caesar's Palace with the uh, Sinatra. Yeah. Well, what he wanted to do, what he ended up getting, is that he was offered a. <sighs> An ex- even want to say an executive position to become like the entertainment director um, at Caesars, and he would perform there. That that was kind of the deal. He would perform there uh, for a certain price, and he would get a monthly stipend, which was reported, which we found was, it was about twenty twenty five thousand a month. And if he could get the license to do that job, and so. Uh, that's when he went out full bore and uh, got his uh, Nevada attorney involved in political connections, and that's when they decided uh, if he was going to get it, it had to come with a vote from Harry Reid. And so that's when they got involved and uh, made a gift to Harry Reid <laughs> in a motel room, and uh, overnight virtually he changed his way from uh, – saying no he's never going to get a license if the mob guy is to he's the greatest guy i've ever known and uh, as time went on after that reed would ask for various favors uh, some large you know if you want to say some large some small but like i if he's going to play someplace reed would want uh tickets or go send his friends backstage to meet him and so forth and that was never done person to person with Reed calling Snatcher that was done with Reed or one of his personnel contacting uh, Sinatra's attorney or one of his attorneys and they would set it up so Reed was happy with uh, what he received and uh, became an advocate for Frank from that time on and what a character, man, Harry Reid. You know, <laughs> people should. I've, I've told the story a few times, but look up Jack Gordon, uh, who married uh, Latoya Jackson, and his relationship with Harry Reid. Uh, it's uh, alleged to have planted a, planted a bomb in Reid's car at one point. And this guy, Jack Gordon, he owns these massage parlors. Every partner he ever had died. <laughs> massage parlor business. You go to. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> Like one after another, you know. You see Jack Gordon coming, man. You know, you don't want to sign those partnership papers. Yeah, uh, I remember. Well, well Reed's uh, wife. Uh, you probably remember that. Where she went to start a car one time and it wasn't running properly. Yeah. It was running rough, and they look in there, and here's a wire going from a spark plug into the gas tank. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it was normally the car that Harry drove. Uh, yeah. And then uh, there's been a, a number of rumors. Uh, about Harry, well, regarding land deals, and you know that in Nevada for uh, solar solar arrays and so forth with the Chinese and uh, government land, and then uh, there's been some interesting rumors uh, I heard from two different people, one from a mob guy over there and one from somebody else, that uh, when Harry supposedly hurt himself uh, exercising, mm. uh, no, nah, that wasn't an accident. That was that was a beating inflicted from a deal that he went back on. So, you know, Harry, there are a lot of nice, interesting stories surrounding him. Yeah, maybe it'll come out one day. We'll hear, we'll hear everything, you know? Yeah, uh, no telling. Yeah. Now, what about Sinatra later on in life? Uh, is it like he had a, he built like a little church on his compound? Well, it was a chapel. Yeah, for a better term, a chapel, not a church, because uh, that was when he thought that uh, JFK was going to spend time <clears throat> at his place in Palm Springs. And that's what really kind of split them up as far as friendship. Hmm. Uh, he, he spent a lot of money, had the place remodeled, uh, had a little compound set up for JFK and the Secret Service and all these telephone lines put in and he was supposed to appear not appear there stay there uh during a visit to california and all of a sudden 
it comes from uh, Robert and who knows who else said, hey, you know, Sinatra's real tight with the mob and so forth, and you shouldn't uh, do this, be seen with him, it'll hurt your reputation, so forth. And uh, he decided not to go there. And so it was Peter Lawford was the guy told, do you call Sinatra and tell him that JFK won't be staying with him, and Sinatra just blew up. Mm. He was furious, uh, especially when, I guess, JFK went and stayed at Bing Cosby's place down in Palm Springs instead of his. And so, uh, yeah, he had a, a lot done at his house in uh, Palm Springs just for the few days that JFK would stay there, and uh, he didn't. He backed out at the last minute. What about, uh, you know, like in the Kitty Kelly book, you know, you hear these uh, horrible, abusive stories about him with these prostitutes. Uh, did you run across anything like that? We, well, there were, came across some that, uh, if you want to say they probably were prostitutes, but uh, from the intelligence, there were ladies that were uh, comforting him, you know, mm -hmm. in different areas uh, on the road and so forth and uh so there there were certainly would have been some uh and most likely there, there were some prostitutes involved as there were with many high-ranking politicians you know in the past too um and into the present there it, there's never an issue regarding some of them uh would they be involved with a prostitute or not at an overnight stop somewhere even on a campaign trail because a lot of them have been. Hmm. And then the, the one thing that um, most people, they ever saw the, the, God, the first Godfather movie, they, that was pretty well based, the character in there on Sinatra. And um, Cone was the uh, running Columbia Pictures, and uh, Sinatra wanted that gig, and uh, from here to Tuna, he wanted to play it, and he didn't want him. And so... He kept saying no, no, and so Johnny Roselli, the mob guy on the West Coast that uh, anybody in law enforcement knew, um, went and had a chat with him and basically told him that no, Frank's going to have that position in that movie, or you're going to have a real hard time, <laughs> you know, surviving from now on. Mm -hmm. um, that was one a direct threat to him, but also uh, the mob then pretty much controlled all the unions regarding the entertainment industry so they could have shut any studio down within a day if they wanted to so uh harry Cohn went along with it and put sinatra in and uh the movie from here to eternity and it worked out well for sinatra what about um other politicians like ronald reagan or maybe uh, new york new jersey well he certainly knew Reagan, and uh, he knew a lot of other ones. Just when, and a lot, obviously, entertainers was when he uh, went for his gaming license. Uh, several of them sent letters and uh, commented to the gaming commission that he's a great guy, and does charitable work, which he did do a lot of charitable work, and so forth, and that he should receive his license. And obviously, they knew nothing about the mob, but uh, any politician. Uh, back then, especially Reagan knew him because of the acting and so forth, but never really saw any evidence uh, Reagan and him, if you want to say, scheming together with some mob guys to do something. Never saw that. Um, and then we never really saw much information beyond if, say, Reagan was at some function uh, before he became president, and even after president, uh, there's some function, a guy comes up and shakes his hand, who he didn't know uh, was a mob guy. And that, quite frankly, that happened all the time. And mm. if you look at every president, you'd probably find that. You know, they, they were glad-handing at some function, some fundraiser, somebody uh, from the mob. What else? Uh, anything about Frank that uh, I haven't asked you? You want the audience to know? Well, um, you probably remember uh, Tony the Ant Spilatro. Sure. Yeah, when uh, he and his brother Michael were over in Vegas, for some 
reason and never 